Okay, hi everyone and welcome. Uh, welcome to this presentation about the Data Hub. Um, just a quick word from our sponsors before beginning. I just want to make clear that most of this project was funded by the Georchestra community. You can see here the logos of the different uh, fund, uh, organizations that funded this project, Geo de France, Data Grand Est, Geo Bretagne, and the Craig. Thank you very much for your trust. So about camp to camp we are a big open source company. We've been around for more than 20 years. Uh, we're a service provider. We're uh, working in France, Switzerland, and Germany for more than 150 employees, and it's a great place to work. <laughs> mm -hmm. Okay. So my name is Olivier Guyot. I'm an architect uh, at camp to camp Yeah, hi. Uh, I'm Florent Gravin, tech lead at camp to camp and uh, no, it's better to, to use this one. And uh, we are both contributors to Geo Network, a member of the PSC, and uh, uh, we will talk about the data which uh, come from uh, a new need uh, upon Geo Network to serve uh, new use cases. So first, I will in, uh, start the presentation with uh, how we end up to create the data hub. Is it work? Yes. Print what? Okay, I would use the mouse. So yeah, uh, why did you did we end up to to think of the data hub and to have this vision to create something new? So first, some history. Let's uh, drop some context. Uh, you may all recognize this. Uh, it really changed uh, geo network life and many uh, geospatial uh, users' life. Uh, in 2007, there was the Inspire Directive, uh, which is a structure uh, led by the European Commission to is sharing uh, the geographical uh, information. So it pushed uh, countries and states to establish laws to make mandatory to uh, have inventory of data sets and to provide services to search, visualize, and download the data sets. They also uh, try to give some standard recommendation to promote the inter interoperability between the systems. So after this directive, so it's random, okay, we saw lots of pineapples pop up in, um, in the European, in the Europe, so it's not an exhaustive list, but the European country had the obligation to implement the, the directive. So we, to, we saw metadata catalog pop up in several countries. For the example of France, it was also mandatory to have um, catalogs, Inspire catalog at the region level, okay, national level and region level. So we saw again metadata catalog popping out in all region of France. The typical architecture in the early ages was the region um, take the responsibility of implementing the directive and uh, provide a metadata catalog. All the organism within the region could register to this catalog and maintain their own metadata. Then, we started to see that more organizations want to come into play and the same organization were able to just publish their own catalog and it ends up with still the region catalog maintaining their own data set but also harvesting other catalogs. For sure, GeoNetwork was the solution unavailable for implementing Inspire Directive. So, uh, because it, I think it's still the, the, the best solution who, uh, who makes open source solution to catalog your ISO metadata. So the reality was mostly, not all, but mostly all the cata catalogs were geo-network everywhere at the state level, region level, other levels, harvesting each others. So this was quite the, the situation. Then a new paradigm come, the open data world. So open data was a new way to, to new, new catalogs, like really more accessible, based on simple principles, findable, accessible, interoperable, and reusable. So it was a trend. We want the data to be open, and we want to make it easy to publish 
this open data. So there is no real restriction, no constraints, uh, easy format, custom format, and it's very quick to create an open data. It was really trendy. I've, we saw many, many open data catalogs popping out. Uh, it brings new tools, new use cases, new catalog. And what was great is that uh, many people could uh, publish their data set and people were really uh, happy to use a light website to search, to visualize with new use cases like data visualization. So it was quite trendy. Unfortunately, or not unfortunately, it's, but just Geo Network really did, didn't really take the turn of the open data because it was just meant to, 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 to provide geo data. Uh, so we didn't really take that direction to, to say that Geo Network can also be an open data catalog because it was not uh, our concern at all. So in the end, this is the situation today, still all the Inspire catalogs, but you can have also open data catalog at region level, open data catalog at city levels, and we have a constellation, a patchwork constellation of very heterogeneous catalogs. Uh, the truth is that may maybe today there is too many catalogs. Uh, it's catalog fatigue, metadata fatigue, maybe. <laughs> um, so everybody has in old catalog, open data, geodata, the data can be duplicated, where to find my data set, uh, and the operability is not great. So at the beginning, what we tried, we tried to make all the system coexist, so we just tried to have an Inspire catalog, a Geo Network, and a CCAN. And we wanted to harvest one in both directions. So the Inspire catalog harvests the open data which are geo, and the open data catalog harvests the geo data which are open. But it was really complex, complex architecture, the interoperability was bad because actually uh, the open data world is great, but it's not meant to be interoperable. Metadata were duplicated, synchronization issues and it was real pain to maintain. So for us, it's not the ideal solution. Why? Just because all the schema are complex and inter interoperability is very hard because it's hard to put cycle in boxes and we all, you always lost information. So the situation is not ideal. That's why we start thinking about a new way to solve the problem. Okay, so then we had, um, yeah, we realized that there are many problems and then we tried to take a step back and think of another approach to, to, to handle this correctly. So we tried and, where is it? Nothing. Okay, so we tried and simplified the whole problem and go down to the very core of what we want to do. And what we wanted to do was provide a single entry point to discover and visualize the data sets of your territory. And that's really all. There's no geo or anything. It's just that. And uh, from that, we decided to create the Data Hub project. <laughs> OK, so the Data Hub is built on three foundations. The most important one is user experience, because we figured that we were doing all this for users to let users find the data and navigate through all this, uh, this data everywhere. So user experience would be the, the main point that we wanted to address. And then there was also developer experience, because it was something that we were struggling for a long time in the Geo Network community. And it was uh, keeping contributors and bringing new contributors because we were working with complex solutions and it was hard and the entry cost was quite high. So we figured let's try uh, yeah, to, to create something new that would be much simpler and easier for developers. And, um, and we also wanted to have the less is more approach. So because we figured we've been for years, we've been trying to add features and solve problems one after the other and solve problems from a technical point of view. And then we realized maybe this is just too much and we will never uh, finish all this and we might just try and remove things on the other hand and try and remove as much as possible and see how to keep it usable. So a quick word of, on the users uh, because I think it's worth mentioning that 
we have to remind ourselves as software developers that software is made for users. Software is it catalogs it, any kind of application is pointless without users, right? So sometimes we try, we try and fix or address things in a technical way or find, find technical solutions. But really, the most important metric is whether users are happy and are able to use our software. So users are really everything. So from that, uh, from that start, we started shopping for ideas into other solutions and get some inspiration. And um, so here you can see, for example, this is a screenshot from Open Datasoft. Uh, Open Datasoft has an interesting approach where it's very data centric. When you're in the catalog, you already have a view of the data sets, the formats. Uh, you see here, you, quickly you have a map visualization of the data um, and uh, also a table view. So we thought it would, it would be really interesting. They're very simple data viz as well. Uh, in other solutions, for example, here, UData, you have a more of a social aspect. The data publisher will be uh, presented and you can follow, you can see the reuses. Uh, you have another solution uh, here. This is Data Grand Lyon and it's a very interesting uh, platform because you have a lot of all these features kind of getting, coming together in a very user-friendly way. So we thought that would be really interesting as well. Then. With all these ideas, we realized we needed some, some, something to actually uh, start from. And then we realized that maybe the best people that could help us on this quest would be the, the users themselves. So we started a UX campaign. So there were interviews of users and geo-network users. And we tried and listened to uh, everything they had to say, everything they wanted to see uh, coming, and everything they hoped for. Uh, there were several pain points while using geo networks, so we tried to list them and uh, address them. And with this, we could produce the first mockups for the project. So you he see here, it's a that's that's a mockup. Um, it's a, it doesn't really look like the other catalog solutions. It's really uh, it, like it gives a really big place uh, of the. Of the, of the search input, which is pretty much the only entry point for the users. And um, then you can see here, that would be a record view. When you click on a record, you go on this page. Uh, you have like the, the shortcuts on top. Um, and then right away, you have like map visualization and a table view. And all this will, was built with the idea that we shouldn't be showing too much information to the user every time, uh, at every moment, the user shouldn't be, um, you know, drowning in information. And so the reception for this mock-up uh, was really good, like the customers were really happy, we were like, wow, that's great, it's gonna change our lives. From then, we did a technical proposal. Um, so for us, oh, that's broken. Hmm? <laughs> for us, it was really important to not add another system, another um, brick in the whole uh, system because we figured it would be, it would be um, not very smart to try and solve the problem of having too many moving parts by adding another one in there. So we really uh, wanted to use GeoNetwork for this. GeoNetwork would be uh, our central source of truth, and it would harvest all these other platforms. And we could actually build uh, harvesters for these platforms pretty easily, it's just JSON APIs, and it wasn't too hard, and it works really well. And then we had to choose a storage format for all this metadata, because um, Geo Network is not able internally to use um, JSON uh, documents. So we tried different things, we made experiments, and it was not always successful, and so eventually we chose this one. But really, it's not that important. And we realized that this was more of an implementation details. This was the internal storage format of the metadata. And this is well supported by Geo Network. But it doesn't really uh, matter for the users. It just has many fields, and we use them. That's all. Then for the UI, we relied on, ge on the Geo Network UI project. So for us, it's an important project because we're really betting on it for the future of, of Geo Network. Um, it's a toolkit for building applications about metadata or other things. 
And um, so it's not meant to be a, re a full replacement of the current GeoNet of the current Geo Network UI because replacing the Geo Network UI, it has so many features that we pr probably wouldn't be able to do it in a lifetime. So it's, it's a different approach. We build this toolkit and we, with this, you have like components that you can assemble and you can you assemble components and you put a style on it and then you have your application which is more focused on one use case. Um, it relies on modern technologies. That's also a big change. It uh, works with Angular. It uses CSS variables, so it means you can easily theme it. There's a theme system which is pretty efficient and very simple. Uh, it uses web workers, web components. There's all these new things that we weren't able to do before. And it, there's also a big focus on code quality and test coverage. So this is part of the developer experience I was saying earlier. It's just to make the life of developers easier. So we feel this project is really a safe investment of our time. And we want to have a good investment for, for, for our time, right? OK, just uh, let's do a quick example of things. So it's very simple to use, not many information. Um, you can just single entry, entry point, infinite scroll. So it's just little de details that make the difference about the user experience. Um, yeah, then you click on a data set, you have the data set view, you can filter on the contact. Um, it's the version one of the data hub, remove the filters, etc. Um, another things which is seem quite great so when you enter a thing and you pick up in the list you will directly jump into the data set instead of triggering a new search and then clicking so it's just small details actually which make the difference in the view you see that there are, there is many things many information you can just jump to a section from an, uh, another you have the data visualization so you can watch all the resources, the WMS, but also the WFS resources on the map. You can click to have the information. You can see tabular data. Uh, the download links are obvious uh, to, 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 to find with the color, with the things. You can filter on them. So, it's, okay, it's just a UI, but it's pretty simple and straightforward. So what's coming up? Uh, we are keep implementing uh, the mockups. So we want to have an entry point from the organization of the catalog. So this is the dev instance. So you also want to have a news feed. So we want it to be like a portal uh, with figures, with nice lists, with nice, nice information, with filters on organization. So the news feed. Uh, the publisher entry and filtering, so one, one publisher, what metadata does he have? Social, so you can register to the metadata, your favorite, talk to other people, comments, better filtering. And what is very important that we want to do is we want to tailor the search according to user info. So when I connect, for instance, if I work on a city on Paris, I will have as a priority all this data set on Paris. If I work at the region level, I will have the data sets that are at the region level, not at the city levels. So we really want to implement these kind of things. Uh, then what's next? Maybe support for other backends. So it's really binded to a Geo Network API, but it could be actually binded to another catalog. Who knows? Uh, depending on the NIC, so OGC API or other catalog. One very important thing is that Data Hub is two things, is a way to harvest in the native API all the open data catalog in Geo Network, but it's also the UI. And the UI we presented to you could be used on any Geo Network. Okay, so once you have a Geo Network at home, you can use the Data Hub as a facade for the search. So this is the, the, the one great point, I think. Then more data visualization, open data soft, there are an API to access the data set to make data visualization. So we want to implement in Geo Network a data API 
to be able to search in the API, to paginate, to filter, and to be able to get the data in the tables, in charts, and so on. One thing which is very important is that uh, we covered the search usage for open data world, but it's still hard to edit, okay, because we are just harvesting. And there is a new challenge for us to be able to create data, open data. Okay, so this is something also, yeah, that we wanted to mention here because it's very important for us. Um, so we thought that the approach that we chose for the data was pretty successful and we figured maybe it could be used to, to solve other issues that people have with in, in inputting metadata in their catalogs and then we could create a new metadata editor for GeoNetwork using this kind of same approach. Um, so we, we want to do that following three points which are uh, make the metadata accessible for everyone, so not just experts, not just knowledgeable people, um, hide the metadata schema complexity, and then make your, make your own editor, make it completely customizable. So there was a proposal on the Geo Network wiki, and, and then, so we want to, you know, everyone who are listening to us, if you wonder, if you're interested and you want to help with this, there's a very simple solution, and it's uh, uh, participating to the crowdfunding uh, campaign that we are doing. You can see here, there's a blog post on our website about this crowdfunding. It's called Help Fund the New Geo Network Editor. So it's very important for us because, uh, of course, if we want to work on this, it's not a, a, a small project, so we'll need some, some funding. But it's also a way for us to show that users are actually interested. And this is an approach that users are interested in. And in a way, it's kind of a vote also. And you're, kind of, you, you're also saying, I think this is a good approach, and I want to push in this direction. And the more people do that, the more we will be able to go further. And yeah, so if you, if you feel like, if you agree with us, and if you feel like that the right way, please take a look, and please let us know. We have to move on to questions. Yeah, OK, it's finished. It's finished. Great.